In this video, we're going to be discussing whether you should modify your CAT diesel engine. This one definitely is not stock. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Dave channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing should you modify your CAT diesel engine? And the reason I'm making this video is probably the most specific email I get the most of is should I modify my diesel engine? And usually it's not should I modify it. Should I make my two turbo C15 into a single turbo? Should I add a tuner kit? Should I change my FLS and FTS, my injector trim files? What are aftermarket ways to add fuel economy or horsepower? And I'm going to try and make a case for not modifying your diesel engine. And it has nothing to do with, I think you're a bad person because you modified your cat. Or that I hate a particular aftermarket brand. My case is basically going to be threefold. One is mixing and matching aftermarket components together that are not designed to be together. You don't know what you're doing and you don't know what changes are being made to this engine. The other two things are going to be changes to your warranty if you make modifications and parts availability on a breakdown, okay? So let's get into the first section of this. So let's first talk about what happens when you start, let's say, adding resistors in line with your sensors or installing an aftermarket turbocharger or changing your FLS and FTS. Well, what are you doing? Well, you're adding parts that weren't designed by CAT, and CAT designs their engine as a system. So if you change one thing, you're going to have effects on other things. Now, of course, this could lead to catastrophic damage, like cylinder damage, valve damage, problems with the pistons, the turbocharger, exhaust manifolds cracking, engine overheating. I'm not saying this is going to happen if you install a fuel temperature sensor resistor. I'm just saying when you change something, it has an effect. And that effect is not controlled by the ECM when you start messing with things that tell the ECM what's going on. And a lot of these things are safety or emissions related. So why does changing your coolant temp or your boost pressure by adding a resistor or messing with the ECM flash why does it change things? Because it's telling the ECM, hey, there's more boost, you can add more fuel, or the engine is hotter or colder than it actually is, or the fuel is hotter or colder than it actually is. Add or restrict fuel. Now, those systems are there to protect your engine, and it's also there to reduce black smoke typically out of the exhaust pipe. So if you are changing these things, you're potentially leaving your engine open to damage, or at least shorten life. Also, Black smoke out of the exhaust is wasted fuel. Although a lot of people like to see that, usually the people driving the vehicle, most other people don't want to see that. So that is my first case for not changing anything in your engine, is that CAT designed the system as a system, and when you change one thing, there's a possibility that it's going to damage or alter something else in the engine, and mixing and matching you don't really know what you're going to affect or how it's going to affect the engine okay so let's get into the other two things okay so the second of the three things is your warranty or your parts warranty cat hasn't made a new engine for a little while for their on highway or rv sector so the original engine warranty on pretty much everything is expired by this point but cat has a pretty good warranty on their parts and the dealership workmanship on all their parts whether they're installed or if you have a rebuild so let's talk about the warranty side and how that can be affected by altering or modifying your engine. Now, I don't expect you to be able to read this, but I'm going to highlight certain sections and zoom in on them so you can see it. This is the Caterpillar Limited Warranty for Parts and Assembled Components. This is what covers all Caterpillar parts on your engine. Now, Caterpillar warranties all parts from 12 months from date of sale to the user. And... That is unlimited mileage as well. Now, what that means is if that part fails, they will replace it to correct the defect. They will also replace any oil, filters, antifreeze, or other damaged items caused by that part, and any labor to replace the part. Now, unfortunately, if you modify your engine, though, so let's start at the top here, allowing Caterpillar access to all electronically stored data, it wants to know if you've modified 
anything in that ECM. And moving down, we have the top bullets and under limitations, failures resulting from any use or installation the Caterpillar judges in improper. And the bottom bullet, failures resulting from unauthorized repairs or adjustments and unauthorized fuel setting changes. That negates any parts warranty. Not only does that negate parts warranty, if you have had a rebuild done and your fresh new engine is running good for you, if you modify it, that also negates your extended warranty. Now, the third thing I'm going to discuss is parts availability. And the reason I'm going to discuss this is because most diesel engines in your truck or your RV or your bus, they're meant to be taken long distances. If it's in a truck, you might be going coast to coast. And let's say you have an aftermarket turbocharger, and that turbocharger fails. Even if the turbocharger is under warranty, the aftermarket part warranty, the dealerships aren't going to treat that as a cat part. They're not going to just cover the part cost and all the labor. That's going to be on you having to get that warranty paid for, typically. Not only that, let's say you have a C15 single turbo, and you're rolling down the road. The turbo goes out, it has an aftermarket turbo, you take it to a shop. What's the downtime going to be? It's probably going to be a lot more with an aftermarket part. Same goes with any aftermarket part. But if that was a cat turbo, most likely they're going to either have it in stock or they'll be able to get it next day. Not only that, it's then going to have a cat parts warranty on it. And that will cover you in the future. So even though cat parts are more expensive typically, you got to think of in terms of downtime and availability if that part fails. Same if you're in, maybe you're in an RV and you, and you live in it and you have aftermarket injectors and those injectors fail. And you don't want to mix and match injectors, so you'd like to get new set of the aftermarket ones. Typically, it's going to be more downtime. It's going to be harder to get. Not only that, that dealership's not usually going to have a warranty or cover the workmanship on aftermarket parts. So you have to think in terms of, hey, if this part fails and I'm out on the road, is it going to increase my downtime? Is it going to increase the amount of time that it's going to take for me to get back on the road? Or am I going to be out of my RV for longer than I wanted to? That's something else to keep in mind. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, this video is not to disparage any aftermarket parts companies. You know, you own your engine. You can do whatever you want to it. I'm not saying you're a bad person, or if I owned a vehicle, that it would make me a bad person if I modified it. I'm just trying to make a case for, with your diesel engine, try to keep it as stock as possible because that system is built as a system. The parts warranties are covered by the manufacturer as long as you use CAD parts as well as reduce downtime in most cases, all right? Now it's time for a little segment I like to call... This truck was driven in here, and you might be able to tell that it is shaking really badly, and pretty bad engine miss, so brought it in, pulled the valve cover, and uh, that, that, that's not very good. Um, that's gonna be expensive. So yep, IVA bolts broken in the head, could not get them out. Thanks for watching the video.